Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger, and hopefully with this video, I'm gonna help you get better at off-road in Need for Speed Heat. Let's go. I'm giving away an Xbox Series X to one of my subs this holiday season. Click the giveaway video link in the description or in the top right of this video now to watch the video and enter the giveaway. Just being a sub will not automatically put you in the giveaway, you must officially enter. So go watch that video, enter, and then come back to this one. Good luck! Alright, this video is going to be broken down into a few different sections. We're going to talk about a build for off-road, we're going to talk about launching, cornering, NOS, and then we'll look at what the difference in speed is for pavement, dirt trail, and then bushes and tall grass. So if there's any section in particular that you're interested in, you can check the description for a timestamp and then just go directly to that section of the video and watch that. So starting off with our build, we're going to be using the Volkswagen Beetle. Now the engine that you're going to want to put in this is the 646 horsepower hybrid i3. Ultimate plus parts on all of the engine parts, and then we go with the ultimate dual turbo. The ultimate dual turbo is definitely going to perform the best in all around situations, so go with that. As far as the NOS bottle is concerned, you're going to use the 5x3 pound NOS. This allows you more control over the NOS and when you can use it throughout the track. To make this thing off-road, you're going to want to use a rally suspension. This is by far the best off-road suspension in the game, and you're going to want to use off-road tires. Off-road tires do fine on the road as well, and you won't really need them considering we're going to be going off-road for the majority of these tracks. The gearbox that I used is the 7-speed gearbox, and the differential is the rally differential. Now if you don't have this level of parts unlocked, use the highest tier parts that you can find within those parameters. So if you don't have the super rally differential, use the sport or the pro one. As far as auxiliaries go, I would recommend NOS refills and NOS duration. Duration is by far the best option, and if you haven't seen my tests, I'll link that video in the description down below. All right, and then lastly with the build, let's take a look at the live tuning. I use maximum steering sensitivity and minimum downforce. I have traction control off, and the drift style is going to be gas. Let's go ahead and move into how to launch an off-road vehicle in Need for Speed Heat, depending on what surface you are launching on. The way that you're going to launch this car really depends on what surface you're going to be launching on. So if you're on pavement or any type of concrete, you're going to launch this at idle. Now, take a look at the way that this car launches at idle. You're going to spin the tires no matter what because of the differential and the off-road tires and the suspension. But the correct way to do this is to wait until you see go, then hit the gas and hold the NOS button at the same time. This will prevent the car from spinning too long. Now you're going to spin like I said no matter what, your wheels will spin because you're launching on pavement. But if you hit the NOS and the gas at the exact same time on go, and then hold the NOS button down so you go through at least two bottles of NOS, your car will pick up speed faster than if you do not do that. Launching on the dirt is quite the opposite. You're going to launch on the dirt at redline. You're still going to hit the NOS button when you see go, but launching on redline on the dirt is the best way. Your car takes off immediately, the wheels dig in, and you're good to go. So make sure that you launch at redline on the dirt and at idle on the pavement. All right, cornering on the dirt is not the same at all as cornering on the pavement. On the pavement, you want a wide turning angle, you want to hit the corner with as much speed as you can, and you want to leave the corner with as much speed as you can. On the dirt, it's much, much different. You can still take a similar approach, but what you really want to do is get the car back to straight. And by straight, I mean the direction that you need to go when exiting the turn. So coming into the turn, you should be coming in very, very hot. You would want to use the e-brake and then straighten the car out as fast as possible. Now you can't straighten the car out as fast as possible if you're busy taking a wide turning angle. When the car is on an angle like this, 
you have very limited traction and almost no acceleration. What you need is that car to be straight. You need the wheels to be straight so that you can accelerate and have traction. That's just the mechanic of this game. So that being said, when you take a turn, what you need to do is e-brake turn almost every turn. Not every turn, but almost every turn. Anything that's sharp, for sure. So let's take a look at a specific example with this racetrack in mind. This is HTV2. So on this first turn, most people would want to take this corner super wide. But here's what happens when you do that. If you take it wide, the car is now spinning with no traction. Only right there is where you begin to get traction back and can accelerate. But look how much time you spent spinning your wheels. Now let's talk about how you should do it. So what you want to do on this turn is take it super tight, hit the handbrake, and then accelerate out of the turn. This allows your car to straighten up much sooner. Look, there, you've got traction at this point. You haven't even gone under the bridge yet. Whereas the other time, you have no traction until almost after the bridge. This is a much more efficient way of taking this turn, and it helps you with speed throughout the rest of the race. Now with that said, not all turns can be taken like that. It depends on how sharp the turn actually is. Some turns you can just make by driving, and some turns you need to slide a little bit to get around them. This turn that's coming up is a handbrake turn. It's a very sharp turn. So we handbrake, get the car straightened out, and then NOS when you're done. This turn up here, you need to slide to get around it. It's still a handbrake turn, but you gotta slide because it's a little bit wider of a turn. It's not quite as sharp. And then the following turn that's up here after this straight is again, another handbrake turn. You handbrake, you get around it as fast as you can, and then you NOS out of it. Now that truck got in my way a little bit, so that doesn't count, but you need to be able to judge when a, a turn is going to be a handbrake turn and when the turn needs to be just a regular sliding turn. The more you race off road, the more you'll understand which turns need to be which. But I will say this, in general, if a turn is sharper, you would need to handbrake. If a turn is a little bit wider, you don't need to handbrake, you can just slide the turn. I know that sounds like vague advice, but it really does depend on your experience as a driver, so obviously practice makes perfect. Let's go ahead and move on to how and when to NOS. The first thing you wanna know is that you should never NOS while your car is sliding. If you don't have traction, using a NOS is just a waste of a NOS. It will not help the car accelerate any faster. In fact, it'll probably just prolong the slide that you're in. So you only want a NOS when your car has traction, and generally speaking, that's when your car is going straight. Now, I'm not saying when you have a long straightaway and you're at top speed, you should use your NOS. In fact, quite the opposite. You should be using your NOS when your car straightens up just after a turn. So let's take a look at an example. In this example from the race HTV2, this corner is pretty long and you can't really handbrake it to get around it faster. This is a sliding corner. Now that being said, you don't want to hit the NOS until your car is completely straight. So I'll show you an example of hitting the NOS mid-corner, and then I'll show you an example of hitting the NOS once the car has been straightened out. And I want you to pay attention to the speedometer. Look at how fast you can get to 140 miles an hour when doing it correctly versus when you do it incorrectly. So the first clip here is the incorrect way to do it. You NOS mid-corner, you still lose a little traction, and then you finally, when you get to the end of this little straight section, you hit 140. Now let's take a look at how you do it the proper way. The approach to the corner is still the same. You wanna slide around, but you don't NOS until right there. Now watch how fast this car gets to 140 versus the previous clip I showed you. You get there even before that pack of trees up there, whereas the other one was almost onto the street when it hit 140. So timing your NOS correctly after turns is important. Like I said, do it when the car straightens out. Don't do it mid-turn. Now the other thing about NOS is that you're gonna wanna use it any time that you have to slow down for a turn. Now, if you're using cornering techniques that I showed you earlier in this video, you will be using your handbrake a lot. So I recommend using NOS after a handbrake turn. I do not recommend it 
when you're going fast already. If you're at 135 miles an hour, 140 miles an hour, do not use your NOS in a straight. It does not help. A single NOS bottle may increase your speed by one mile per hour or maybe two, depending on how fast you're going. So it's really not a good use for it. I would much rather use it coming out of a turn that I had to slow down for as an acceleration tool rather than a top speed tool. It's just more effective that way. All right, let's move on to the very last section of the video, which is on different surfaces, the car has different max speeds. So on the dirt, you're gonna max out the car somewhere between 140 and 150 miles per hour. Usually you can never get to 150. You always end up at like 147, 148, and then you end up having to slow down for a turn. But on the pavement, you can easily get to 160, 170. So here's what you need to know. When you're on the pavement, you are much faster than when you're on a dirt trail. When you're on a dirt trail, you are much faster than when you're in the tall grass and the bushes of the side of that dirt trail. So for an example, let's take a look at this little tiny section of this race. Notice that when you go through the bushes, your speed drops tremendously and you're only going through a very small portion of these bushes. I'm gonna replay it over and over again so you can see it. The speed has dropped tremendously on just a tiny section of this course, but this applies to all of the course. If you're on the trail, you can see that there's tire tracks. This is the intended trail for this race. Your speed is much faster. It doesn't get slowed down at all, but the second you go off of that trail, you are definitely slower. So I wanna keep that in mind. Now there are times, like in this race, where going off the trail slows your speed down, but is actually faster because it acts as sort of a shortcut. There's a lot of it in this particular race, so that's why I'm showing you this. Just keep that in mind. You kinda of have to judge this as you're racing this. Certain tracks want you to take that sort of off course route so that you can maintain a good line or so that it's just faster. Other tracks, you're gonna to wanna to follow the intended path, the one that has the tire tracks or the given trail that you can actually see. Again, this is one of those things that just takes a little bit of experimenting and I really can't tell you exactly where you should be driving on every single off-road course. It just would be a very, very long video and it's just not something that I'm willing to do right now. So, that being said, use your best judgment. If it seems like a shortcut is faster, take that little shortcut. If it doesn't seem faster to you when you're experimenting, then don't take it. Stay on the road and keep your speed up. All right, guys, that's really it for this one. I know that some of you might have some questions after this video because this is not an exact science. There's a lot of variables involved in driving off-road. So if you have any questions, just send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter. I'd be happy to answer. And if it's a specific question about a specific race, I don't mind that either. But just give me the race that you're talking about and the corner you're talking about. It may take me a little bit longer to get the answer to your question. So I'll respond as fast as I possibly can. All right, I appreciate you watching and getting through to the end. Thank you so much. Shout out to all the militia subs. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Trigger out.